today, I think you and I are a bit hot under the collar. We, um, Kenny and I woke up this morning to a retail wire conversation. The title is, will shrinkflation grow into a, a, into a big problem for CPG brands? And uh, when I saw the title, I, I, it caught my attention because I think this is something that Kenny and I have been thinking about for a long time. We are worried about increases in cost of goods and, and what it means to brands and retailers and consumers, um, you know, having played each of those roles in our lives. Right. Uh, but, but we, uh, and we'll, we'll tag the, the article is down below. The link to the article is down below. You can see the comments for yourself in there. But I think um, both of us took some issue with the, um, you know, with, with the comments in there. Like all of these people are very smart people. They work in the industry as we do, but um, they clearly picked a, a more consumer view of, um, you know, brands and what brands need to do, right? To, to protect themselves from, um, you know, price, you know, pricing issues or, or price hikes across cost of goods and things like that. The first premise though was, I, I think this is where it's sort of, the, the premise of, this, of the article is that CPG companies, are going out of their way to, in essence, because they don't talk about cost per se, Phil, mm -hmm. going out of their way to shrink package, to maintain a higher retail uh, or to maintain a retail price, but at a lower volume. So mm -hmm. I get a one kg or a 100, a one liter of shampoo last week, 9.99. This week it's 9.10 ml, 9.99. So I showed no price increase. Yeah. I lowered my volume. Maybe so the consumer is none the wiser. Exactly. Right? And what yeah. at the end of the day, I shrunk my package mm -hmm. potentially deceitfully or in a, in a method of mm -hmm. trickery so that I could make more profit um, as opposed to doing a price increase. In essence, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. that was sort of the crux of, of, um, of, of that article. Yeah, correct. Right? Correct. Yeah. Which, before we started reading anything, I think put Phil and I into a, 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 a funk. And that's probably a nice way to say it because I was well past I, you know, that. So, so I want to just clarify, Kenny's a passionate Italian. I, I don't think that funk. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I don't know the rules okay, on right, YouTube right. and I don't know the to uh, say. Okay. I'm trying to be really clean. Here. Okay. I'm going to say right. funk. You do whatever you want with this, but that's what I'm going to say. But but we did we did take issue because I think I think that um you know price increases for anyone who's been through them we don't take them lightly and they're they're really not easy things to do right um they are they're if, if you're raising your prices by going to a retailer good luck to you it's difficult to do um, retailers are are pushing back on those right now um, and then and then the second part is then in order to help keep costs in line you know brands need to have another way so if if but a well, retailer so that they're pushing back you're being mm -hmm. way too nice to me okay yeah you're in canada and you yep. have a cpg brand yep. let's use hostess pretty big player yep. got some muscle etc yep. they could they had to basically in essence stop shipping loblaws to get a price increase yeah and to get a price increase in today's retail world i gotta go with 15 sheets of documentation as to why my price they're, they're right in your business they are invasively in your business right it's like tell me exactly so, what is going up like so if I you didn't want to share all your ingredients in. and suppliers you're doing it anyway in this manner but i can't i can't put everything in correct so yeah let's say i'm a potato chip so what's my call what's what's the potato chip issue potentially the potato uh, the yeah. oil, if it's fried, et cetera, yeah. those are allowed to be in yeah. packaging. We're not too sure. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. apparently there's no packaging issues. Freight, definitely not. Wages. We don't give a shit if you pay people more because it's not our problem. Rent, your problem. Taxes, your problem. So at the end of the day, I have to run a business. I got families in my shop or wherever I'm at that I need to feed, but I'm not allowed to do anything to get a price increase so that I can continue to make money to keep these people employed, right? A solution is potentially shrinking the package, not nefariously, because the only way for me to potentially avoid 
that bullshit of me justifying my life to actually make a profit so I can pay people. Yeah. I have to go down a different path. Yeah. What I have to do now is don't go crazy. Maybe I only lower 10%, et cetera, so that I don't change the package substantially so that yeah. I don't now walk into a whole set of relisting fees. The beautiful charges retailers charge you for the privilege of being on their shelves. Well, and, and even then it's, it's not simple. Like you're, you're, talking about foil and packages that you've already pre-printed sizes on that now you've got to work out. I've, I've got to throw know, them out. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so what's, yeah. who's recouping those? You can't yeah. put those in there because yeah. that's your problem. Yeah. Like it's just a whole ton of things. And what I was really pissing me off, okay, I'll say it that way, funk, we rocked that one. What pissed me off more than anything today is I'm reading this and I'm thinking to myself, clearly none of you own a brand. Clearly none of you have ever asked for a price increase in the country of Canada in the grocery channel and definitively not within the last two years definitively yeah right yeah. so you have no clue as to what you speak you make it sound like there's this this conspiracy of these of, of cpg people sitting in the room think oh my god we can screw the consumer you know what we'll do we'll lower the packaging we'll make more money because we're going to keep the retail the same really really Let, let's just uh, understand what what's happened to cost of, of just shipping yeah i think I so, told so you let's talk about that because you and i talk about this I let's, think let's do something simple show. like a shipping container so if we so, if we talk shipping containers when we started right like before the pandemic before kind of all of this thing kind of went crazy a shipping container was what four thousand dollars ish so let's say a 40 foot yeah. let's, let's do that 40 yep. foot out of italy let's yep. say was let's say the equivalent it's going to be close but we're going to plus or minus bigger yep. about four thousand canadian yeah right yeah. 4,500, maybe 5,000 Canadians, yeah. right? I bring salt into the country, let's say, one kg. A 40-foot container weights out at about 26,000 kg. Okay. It might cube out at 20,000 kg. So for okay. people to understand that is you can only do two things in a container. You can either put as many boxes in before the door can't close. Yeah. And as long as they don't exceed 26,000 kg, the door closes. Yeah. If you get... Um, 50 boxes in and it's at 30,000 kg you got to take some boxes off but you may have dead air in there so yeah yeah correct I know that don't worry about the math but yeah. four or five thousand dollars Canadian last year means that if 20,000 boxes of salt were on that container at that point if I do the math I think it's going to be about 20 cents a box yeah of okay. that box is shipping so you go to your store you buy your sea salt at a dollar 99 20 cents of that is shipping cents of that was shipping yeah right and then, you yeah. know there are things that you get it in yeah yeah that container now is close to it's actually over twenty thousand dollars canadian right same container so five times thousand boxes twenty thousand yeah. dollars a dollar a box now yeah i'm just shipping never mind the cost of the salt has gone up and all the other crap that's gone up with it the boxes the packaging the, everything. everything so everything. now yeah. what do you want what do you well, like all the einsteins that went and commented the other way yeah. what would you like to, what would you like to be done i can't get a price increase through and if i can i gotta justify to the nth degree to legitimately try to get back that shipping cost so that i can actually bring the salt in to sell it to the consumers in canada and potentially make some money so that the people that we're employing to distribute the salt can actually go home and feed their family but that is apparently sinful as opposed to just not doing not doing anything. So the the solution today was oh price increase price increase can't get it. So what we could maybe do is okay say so listen okay if we dropped it let's say to five hundred grams we get forty thousand boxes now in the trade ups yeah because we just doubled up right yeah well maybe that's fifty cents a box now right I can't yep. sell it less than a dollar ninety nine so I have to hold that dollar ninety nine yeah. yeah. I can't go at ninety nine cents because yep. half the size because now, 50% of my shipping costs, I have won any, I've, I've lost. So there's, I maintain the dollar ninety nine. There's only a handful of ways to go about this. And I still don't make as much yeah. money. I, I actually probably get close to breaking even. Yeah. But yeah. somewhere in this, this, this mentality, that was a nefarious plan on me, an importer, to screw people into, into something. Can you tell how agitated I get on this? Like, I'm so, I, I'm yeah. so tired of this <laughs> bullshit narrative that these, these, and it's honestly, and I hate to say this because I'm going to get delisted everywhere, but you got retailers on television, oh, we're holding prices, we're holding prices, holding prices. Well, congratulations. Yeah. There's a whole but, bunch of other people that like to eat 
dinners too and take their kids to games yeah. and, and participate in life. But you're going to put them out of business because there's not a lot of other options for these people. Like, what do you want the CPG side to do? So, so um, we're going to wrap up with this, but you oh. actually found, you found a, a, a post. We found lots of posts, but, but the one that was very God articulate uh, was from, from a lady named uh, Alyssa Hutton. She's the CEO of BC Food and Beverage. Um, but, uh, and we'll put yeah, that this response though, again, content response to law of laws making, I think, uh, yeah. what was it? So, what was so it? to the article where everyone was like, oh, you know, brands are doing this because they, they, they're kind of out to try and, you know, square every buck they can law of laws just, you know, posted basically a Q1 profit of about 40% over last year, year over year. Um, so Q1 profit nearly 40% year over year. Again, um, awesome. And, yeah, and happy then her for Loblaw, her happy comment, for Loblaw shareholders. Yeah. fantastic, great news. But, but they, you know, like this is one of those situations too. Like, do do you not take a bit of margin yourself so that you can also help the consumer out? Like, why is this on a brand only to you know? Because the consumer relationship is a it's a handshake, right? It's the consumer gets their goods from a retailer who gets it from a brand. So the brand and the retailer, you know like we can be adversaries in this process, but it's really much better if you're partners, right? This has gone so toxic though, Phil. The relationship yeah. between brands and retailers right yeah. now is so toxic. Yeah, it's really tough right now. It's a one-sided story and yeah. the retailers have gotten even to, to mainstream media where yeah. when they talk about it, it is talking more about shrink, shrinkflation, which yeah. is legit. And I'm not yeah. saying, listen, I'm a consumer. I, my money doesn't uh, sit no. in my house yeah. and I just yeah, miraculously yeah. things yeah. land. I go buy stuff too. Yeah. I don't like it either. But at least I understand why it's happening. Now, there are CPG companies to do things that aren't on the up and up. I'm not arguing that. But these blanket comments that is some, this plan that these companies are making scads of money, it's right now, it's the retailer that's holding the cards. Yeah. And when you go into your store and you see empty shelves, you know why you're not going to see salt soon from other countries? Because it's not worth bringing it in. Yeah. I can't bring the sea salt. I'm, I gotta, I gotta wrap it up. Just, I gotta oh. read Alyssa's um, kind of post, and then, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here. Um, seeing this absolutely infuriates me. Big retailers continue to raise prices for consumers due to inflation, yet the producers and processors who grow and make food are locked in to pricing, handcuffed by big retail refusing to accept very valid and real price increases they are facing. All for massive profit, glutinous behavior at the cost of consumers, processors, producers, and input providers with zero consideration to communities, businesses, and people who buy their food to keep them in business. And then well she goes said. on to say the federal government needs to address this. Disruption. Well said. So, but she's. Right? she's it, 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 it's this hard fill. You can't right get on price increases. Yeah. Costs are, and the costs are even, and the thing is, I guess yeah. we were at this, as they said, but the cost for producers to even play with retailers has gotten yep. worse. Listing fees get worse. All the nickel and dime fines and this and yep. that and paying for the plastic that yep. was a result of a, of a, a bug, not anybody yep. in CPG. Yeah. Again, we're all partners. We don't buy and play, but yeah. come on, guys. Yeah. All right. That's it for today. Uh, quick thoughts from Kenny and me. Thanks. Ooh. Ciao.